Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. And this is Megan. And uh, if you listen to this, because it's you listen to this on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we switched our uh, hosting site. Uh, we were on Anchor, but then we upgraded to Buzzsprout, which is a paid. Well, yeah, people who paid. aren't in the podcast world have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, no, Anchor is like a free place where you can host your podcast from. It's a, it's a guy who, it's like the middle man company who sends our, sh- our stuff out to everybody. Yeah. And uh, we finally upgraded to Buzzsprout um, because we just felt like Anchor wasn't, wasn't cutting it for what we needed. So, yeah. Anywho, um, today's episode is on the gates of hell. Portals. Portals of hell. Yes. You don't even know the title. Well... Oh, I mean, portals of hell, gates of hell. Yeah, kind of the same thing. It's, uh, yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, do you know what it says above the gates of hell? No. No. Oh. It's uh, the old legend. Uh, it's in the Bible. I forget where. But um, above the gates of hell mm-hmm. are inscribed the words, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Oh, dang. You That's... Know. And that's the English translation from the Latin translation. Yeah. 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 Abandon all hope ye who enter here. Yeah. I think also on this uh, episode, we're going to talk a little bit about our theories on hell because more and more I do research, the more and more I kind of think like growing up, I always thought like hell was like underneath, like, you know, heaven's above, hell is underneath. But I, so I went through a period of time where I thought hell was on earth. Right? Like, literally, the, or at least the entrance, but, like, then I started reading when I was researching into it being inside the earth. It was misconceptions. I mean, the whole idea of fiery brimstone and demon, uh, and like, hell being a place and stuff like that, that was created by Dante in Dante's mm-hmm. Inferno, right? How he described the nine circles of hell, each go down layer by layer by layer, and in the deepest, darkest part of hell, where it's frozen ice cold, so far away from God that it has no sun. Is where Lucifer stands, or is mm-hmm. imprisoned, right? That was all created by Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Um, in the Bible, there's not much, much much description of hell. Mm-hmm. Um, and remember, it, the Bible was an English translation, f- is a translation from a Latin translation that's translation from a Greek translation. So, numerous translations, but um, hell is described as heel, H E E L, right? As it pronounced, which means ground or earth. Yeah. So hell is essentially here what we're in but um i don't think that's necessarily what it is now theories of supernatural and spiritual world we know it's on another plane another dimension or something and there's interested entrances across earth apparently now what i've learned or what i've been told um i forgot if it was in the bible or it was a story around surrounding christianity or again in Dante's Inferno, I can't remember. I think it's in the Bible. There are three, uh, or is it a legend? I don't know where my source is, but I remember what I've been told this. There are three uh, uh, entrances to hell. Mm-hmm. One in the ocean, one in the desert, and one in Jerusalem. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. The one in bit. the ocean <clears throat> would be where? Bermuda's Triangle. Did you see? I'm going to post. That reminds me really quick. Sorry. Oh, a light I was like, bulb. what? <laughs> Sorry. A light bulb went on. They actually had a ship that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle disappear. And then now it re came out of wherever it came out of. I don't know. Is anybody on it? I don't know. I didn't read the full article. I saw that passing through and I was like, I got to do more research. And I haven't done the research yet. It was today. So I'm going to read the article. And then if it's worth sharing then i'll post it on our instagram since it, it, you guys will probably already see it if it is or if it isn't so the one in the desert now that can be misconter eh, not misconstrued but theories on where it is and it and it, again it necessarily doesn't have to be hot in the desert could mean in antarctica why it's so barren cold and dead mm-hmm. right or in the desert i.e africa and this is the sahara desert why it's so dry and nothing lives there yeah. And when in Jerusalem, when that's, no one knows where. Yeah. Now, there's been different supposed portals of hell that people have talked about and seen in, uh, we call it the seven seven uh, gates mm-hmm. of hell, 
on Earth. What were the, the ones you remember you were telling me about? I know about? there was one in China. Because I remember hearing about that one. Yeah, there's one in China. And then in there's a local legend that claims that in the woods off Trout Run Road in Hellam Township, Pennsylvania, sits the seven gates of hell. Uh, apparently, the gates appear near the site of a tragic asylum fi- uh, fire. And if you step through all seven gates, you land straight into hell. Um, that's technically kind of based off a fiction story, but, um, yeah, people think it's an actual, it's like one of those things that's, it's a legend, but people haven't been brave enough to do it. I mean, there's been different places people talked about like that. If that's an interest to hell, then it has to be there. There's that one in China. There's that one, uh, actually in Iceland at the base of a volcano. Yeah. Or in a volcano where people have actually dealt or gone there and done uh, stuff by throwing into a volcano that erupted mm. ever how long ago. Um, there's a one that's actually in the Russian... Uh, St. Patrick's Purgatory in stomach, Ireland. <laughs> huh? If you hear it growling, it's my stomach, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mount Hecla in Iceland. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Archeron in northwest of Greece. I remember hearing about that one. Uh, um, that apparently is uh, it's like in a mountain sign. Uh, it's it was a supposed temple to uh, Pluto, mm. I think. Um, I remember I was watching a video on it the other day, and they were talking about how that one, the people like it, it was like horribly sacrificed or something, or burned alive. I can't remember which one it was. The Archeron. I hope I'm saying. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, in Greece, that was actually, like, that was featured in the book, The Odyssey. Yeah. Which I read that in high school. I actually liked that one. That book. The book I actually liked. The yeah. Odyssey? The Odyssey. I what I didn't that. like was Beowulf. I remember reading that. <laughs> My favorite was To Kill a Mockingbird, I think. Like, that book was intense. Um... Yeah, if you guys hear growling, it might be something else, or it might be my stomach. What do you guys know? <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, the one that I saw, if there was a entrance to hell that looked like it, mm-hmm. would be the uh, the fiery crater that has been burning in the um, Karakum, Karakum, <laughs> Karakum Desert since 1971. Jeez. Since 1971. You know Jeez. how it happened? Huh. Um. There were. It was a company in looking for this is in, in Ukraine, I think, mm-hmm. over there in that area, um, in a desert, and they found a major pocket hole of natural gas. Mm-hmm. Natural gas can be used for propane and stuff like that. Um, so they started drilling um, it to, of course, mine it, or siphon it out. So, but what happened when they were drilling? It uh, we call it it cratered. It all collapsed, Jeez. and all the equipment, the all equipment fell through. All right, you create a big ass crater and all fell, and natural gas started spewing out. Jeez. Now they had a choice: allow the gas to come out of the ground, which is a lot, and mm-hmm. destroy the ozone layer in the area, and probably cause a major environmental problems for the entire city and villages nearby, or burn it, which they've done before. Um, if you look at oil um, tanking places, uh, like once they have a little. So it was like a little tower with fires burning on top. Mm-hmm. That's the natural gas that's above oil that's it's coming out. Or it's the gas that they're coming out of. So they keep burning it to keep it from getting out. Yeah. So they set on fire and they waited for it to burn. And now they, they according to the scientists there, they thought it would only go for about two weeks. It's been burning since 1971 and it's still going on till today. Jeez. And you can see it. Uh, the crater is about a football <clears throat> field size hole in the ground that's on fire. Is that in Greece? No, it's in it's in Russia or oh. Ukraine. There's another one. Um, it's known as Crater Lake. Um, oh, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, that that in Lake Avernus. The water is so toxic that it's literally like almost sulfuric acid. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's Cape Matapan. There's Cape Matapan, but it doesn't tell you where it's at, which is weird. It's like this under. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um, this underground cave that lights up pink. Yeah. Which I don't know why they would. But the mm. Mayan Canotes. The what? Mayan Canotes. 
I think you're saying that right. <clears throat> I think I am. I think I'm. Coyotes. No. <laughs> it's uh, the natural underground waterways located in Mexico and Central America. Mm. Funny, mm. I didn't hear any about that. Mount Osor, which is known as Fear Mountain, and it's basically a barren gray landscape with bubbling waters and the persistent smell of sulfur. Which has things like farts. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> uh, there's a lot, apparently. Well, I guess this is 13. Um, <clears throat> Hoska Castle in the Czech Republic. Ah, uh, yes. I remember hearing about that one. You know anything about it? No. They have a well in there that's um, supposedly there's no end to it. What? Yeah. And it's extremely haunted, this castle. Right? It's in the Czech Republic, right? Yeah. Uh, very haunted. Um, very, um, we call it. There's so been- that well really quick that well yeah. right they put prisoners in the first prisoner that they they only put him down a few seconds and he started screaming when he was pulled back up the story goes his hair had turned white and it seemed like he aged 30 years he babbled incoherently about half human creatures who flapped through the darkness of grotesque wings you're halfway right it was a king of the area of the land um, that gave that prisoner an option go down the hole and, uh, or down the well and find out how deep it goes because they didn't know or um, or die. Right? Uh, so, like, I'll go down the well, whatever. So they loaded him with a rope and that's when he went down there and he, they far as they could go and then he started screaming every her so far down. And they pulled him up and that's when his hair's white and shit and talk about flying creatures of hell and shit. Wow. Now, if I don't know how you would do that, just throw a camera down there. And have it like, you know, signal footage, but you probably lose a signal how far it goes down. Maybe a drone could go down there, but I don't know how far you can get away. Yeah. Unless you have like a cable that's like, you know, eight miles long. Maybe you can figure out how far it goes. Yeah. But yeah, that place is like extremely haunted. Remember Jeez. Was, there's, a, there's a series that I didn't know about that Jack Osborne. Oh, yeah. In. Portals to Hell. Portals yeah. to Hell. That yeah. kept popping up. Yeah. We try to research it. Like, what the hell is this show? Yeah. Um. And they talk. You know, that was one of them. And I, I think I watched a little bit of the episode where they went there. And it's like that place is fucking insane. But wasn't there a place where like they lowered a microphone down in like a cave or something? That was... is an urban legend. Oh, an um, urban legend. This some, some people say they debunked it, right? Mm-hmm. But that was in Russia. There was a well that they uh, a hole in the ground that they found, and they needed needed to know how far it was down before they get started drilling or something. Mm-hmm. So they lowered uh. A microphone it's it, it meant to record the seismic uh of the earth so to make sure there's no qu- like quakes or something i don't know yeah it had to do with something with seismic activity and the microphone was meant to record that right not voices just that and they lowered it down there to see if they hear anything and they recorded you know people sc- hear people who are, heard screaming and like a loud like a, a voice uh speaking in their language over them and stuff like that like you can hear the recording that was like the big thing of what 2000 Seven or eight, I remember that. So do you think, what is your perception of hell? Do you think it's like an underground thing, or do you think it's inside the earth, or? Two different theories. Uh-huh. And both don't ha- in- include, well, three maybe, possibly. But there was a guy who did interviews because he died and supposedly mm-hmm. went to hell for about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pronounced dead for about five or six minutes. Mm-hmm. And he said he spent some time in hell. There's another guy who wrote a book, says My 11 Minutes in Hell, stuff like that. Well, I don't know. It was real. Mm-hmm. I actually read the book. But the guy talking to the interview, he was a skydiver. Mm-hmm. And his whole, and his, you basically saw him, half like, half his face was like destroyed almost, Jeez. like reconstructed. Yeah. Because um, what happened to him? But he was a skydiver. He, his whole thing was skydive. Like that was his, his thrill. He could not, it was like an addiction for him. Mm hmm. So he continuously did that over and over again. And then one time he uh, parachuted and launch. Then the second one didn't go off or halfway did. And he fell to the ground and was basically pronounced dead. How far impact he did on the side of his face His half of his skull was crushed and stuff like that from the impact. Uh, but they were to bring him back. But he said his time, he said when he instantly hit the ground, he could see uh, like a t- I, the light at the end of the tunnel they talk about. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like that. It was almost like a light that was in an empty space that was pulling him towards it. 
Um, and he heard a voice, you know, telling him that it, it thought he was a voice of God. It was speaking to him, telling him that, um, I don't know who you are. I can't accept you in. And for that, you must, you must go. And like, he's like, what's going on? Who is he? Who are you? He's talking about. And all he remembers seeing is an endless amount of blackness coming towards him. And it wasn't blackness in a sense of pain or destruction and that it was almost non-existence mm. coming towards him. And he was crying out, no, 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 I can change my ways. Please give me another chance, stuff like that. He was like begging because this was coming towards him. And that's when he was brought back. Mm-hmm. And that was his perception of hell was non-existence. No more thoughts, no more feeling, nothing anymore. Mm. Right? Now, that could be his perception. Mm-hmm. And that's my other, my, one of my theories is that hell to you is to whatever your worst thing is possible. Right? Yeah. It's not the same for everyone. And that's been portrayed in different stories and movies and stuff like that. Bill and Ted, <laughs> the excellent adventure, when it went to hell, right? They had to, you know, choose your hell. And it was like either being, you know, tortured by this or tortured by that, but they had to choose there what their eternity of torture would be. And that was also in the, uh, the show, uh, Preacher. Um, where your worst thing you've ever done in your entire life was done over and over and over again for all eternity, like Jeez. in a prison, right? Um, so there's different portrayals of that. But most people, when they think of hell, they think, oh, it's a fiery place where you're tortured by demons, ripped apart over and over again for all existence. And all you know and all you can think about is pain, the worst pain you've ever experienced over and over and over again for all eternity. And those, those who cry out to God cannot be heard because they're not there or he can't hear them. Hmm. See, I used to think. Now, that's a th- that's, you know, morbid yeah. <laughs> to, to think about. But well, the thing yeah. with hell is like I used to think. Scared of shit out of people just, just saying <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I used to, like my kind of viewpoints on it has changed. Like. I. I don't know. There was a concept that um, I was talking to one of the guys from Believe in the Bazaar about. They messaged us and had a few questions and stuff like which that. One? Was it Charlie? I don't know which one it was. Tyler. I, I want to say I think it's Tyler. It's, it, I don't know. It was like I can't text. see Charlie asking something about it. I don't know. <laughs> but um, it was they were they were asking me about ghost decay, and I've never heard of that. But it kind of led us onto the subject of like. And I was thinking, maybe, so you asked me, like, do, do ghosts like experience a second death? Yeah, almost. Like, that's that's uh, Mexican folklore belief. Really, it's called the second like, death when you not get forgotten. like a second death, but I feel like, for instance, if you if you kind of go back, right? Have you ever really heard of a ghost and like someone picking up a ghost nowadays from like, like I'm not talking about like the settler times or whatever, but like really far back. Like really far back, like ancient Greece time. Have you ever picked up, heard of anybody picking up any evidence from a ghost that was that long ago? Well, I've never seen any ghosts hunting in places of that old. And I'm wondering if, like over time, if say like they they don't necessarily cross over. They're stuck here for some reason. They have to complete some kind of like mission, soul searching thing, that kind of deal. Right. As time goes on, do they start to kind of decay and then kind of poof to nothingness? I don't think so. Because Ghost Adventures, they recorded ghosts that were probably hundreds of years old, yeah. but not thousands of years old. But, uh, but no, they were because they recorded ghosts on the uh, Pavelia Island. And that was from the 1400s. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm not saying that was a thousand years ago, but that was almost, you know, almost three, four, four, six, wait, 800 years? I don't think it was that long ago. 1400? No, but didn't something else happen, like, more recently there? The plague? There's a black plague, the Red Death. They yeah, so. The insane wasn't... Asylum. Um, and then there was, it was a prison. But, that, uh, like, uh, numerous things have happened on that island. Yeah, so, I mean, creation. you can't say that. The ghosts from 1400 are still there. It could be the ghosts that were of more recent times. Like, I know, like, every time I hear some sort of... I mean, the only thing that I've ever heard being completely ancient is demons. That's the only kind of, like, paranormal stuff that I've heard that is, like, ancient. Like, I've never heard of, uh, like, if ghosts 
hunting people go to Pompeii? Are they going to pick up the people from Pompeii? Has that ever happened? Again, I, I don't. I, there's probably out there some. Uh, anybody listening, you probably have seen it, but I haven't seen ghost hunting shows go to places that goddamn old. Or I wish Ghost Adventures, the whole thing was like to be a travel channel to go across you know, places like that. And they've hardly left the United States. Yeah. No, I would pick. I would. Pick, I mean, right. I guarantee now they can't go anywhere, but I mean, even before. Well, like, because years ago, like literally, Pompeii would be the, the, the place to go because literally they have like the, not mummified, but like. Or even ancient Egypt. Have you heard of Ghost of Ancient e- Egypt? How Clearpath? would you communicate? I don't know. It would be difficult. Yeah. But That's you would hear too. something. I mean, the best you can do is residual, because even if you try to contact an intelligent, they're not going to be able to understand what you're talking about. That's kind of the thing. You like, see, even if you, sp- you oldest language of ancient Egypt would be ancient, ancient Egyptian, but I mean, how many people do you know can speak that? And that's what I'm saying is like maybe a ghost kind of goes through a second, uh, like a ghost decay in the sense that they get so unfamiliar with the times that they can't find a way to communicate. Okay. Here's something mess with your head. Huh. Ancient Egyptians wouldn't call themselves Egyptians. Really? Egypt wasn't a land. Oh. They would just call themselves whatever they were at the time. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. I know. I was like that. My mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no, we were kind of like bouncing off that idea, and that's when it kind of like. That's when it kind of like too made me think of. Because when I was a teenager, I used to think, like, hell was on Earth. And when you died, essentially, you would go to heaven like you'd get forgiven. Like, that's the thing that kind of differentiates, like, from the Bible. Like, you know, you're kind of told, repent, 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 right? Um, And I think they don't give kind of, like... I mean, for someone that doesn't believe in God, you know, it's different for them. But, like, I don't think they give God enough credit. I feel like God is going to know what's truly in your heart. And I feel like that's where that whole forgiveness thing comes from in the Bible. Like, if you're truly sorry, he'll forgive you, kind of. Um, And we take it from a Christian perspective. Yeah. Hell itself is not just obtained to Christian belief, mind you. Yeah. Right? Every religion... Has a version. Has a version. Um, I guess the most oldest that we know of is Hades, mm-hmm. i.e. Um, the Greeks, Greek hell and stuff like that. And how it was explained is that there was a layer that hit hell for Hades was. And it, underneath it was Tartarus. Mm-hmm. That was below hell. Right? And that's where the yeah. Titans were imprisoned. Yeah. This is Greek mythology, Greek belief. But, yeah. Um, no, my second theory on, on the hell in a sense that is uh, a theory of – because the first theory is that that's endless darkness and torture in its own place. Mm-hmm. Second is an actual place and imprisonment, right, where um the devil himself is there along with everybody else that was deemed to go there, mm-hmm. right? That can be accessed through our plane. Hence why demons have the ability to be on our plane. That's – well, this is – that kind of is what – Sorry, I'm trying to spit this out before I forget. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking was, that's what made me think of why demons and darker entities have so much pull to humans right now. Like when you're alive, the fact that they can possess you so easily, I feel is because they're on almost the same plane as you. You know what I mean? Like if God's up there in heaven or in, if you think of all the realms or whatever, on a different realm or whatever, he still has pull here on Earth, obviously. But, and then too, like, the fact that the devil fell, right? Mm. Makes me think he had to fall somewhere, and I don't think he's going to fall what was it? Uh, through the Earth into, like, the South, there was whatever. A, there's a, there was an exorcist, I think it was an exorcist beginning, or the prequel mm-hmm. to the series, I think. Yeah. Um, they talked about how uh, when the devil, or Satan, fell from heaven... He uh, landed on Earth, and he landed in uh, Africa. That would make sense. And there's, oh, a, there's a lot of dis- like diseases there. I'm gonna say Africa has got a, a gets a short end of the stick, but they have a lot of shit that's happened to them over time. Yeah, famine and stuff like that. Yeah. But it would make sense in the desert in an area. Hence, another entrance. Um, in the movie, there was a, uh, a temple underneath the ground that 
uh, there was a church built on top of it to, you know, the fact that that's where the devil landed on Earth, right? When he mm-hmm. fell. Um, and that movie itself was, that was pretty intense. What movie? Uh, the Exorcist. I think it was like the prequel to the series. Oh, yeah. Like Exorcist Beginning or something like I think it was called. Uh, I remember watching it. That was, was like, whoo. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, so it's a plane that they can easily access on. Now, here's something that I've been learning. Mm-hmm. Um, the demons that we know about, right? Uh, they have their names like Ball and Balfamot and. Ew, they- don't say it. <laughs> no, in, in Zibblebub, whatever oh. the fuck his name. I don't like the names. Right? Those ones that have a more pronounced name that have been worshipped in pagan religion, stuff like that. I think what happened. Now, this mm-hmm. is a theory of mine. Now, it could possibly be true. When Lucifer, when Satan, he fell from heaven, landed here before man was here, right? Or when man was here, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Those other entities, right, either fell in line with with the devil. They said they would follow him, or they said they could be his leader, or he basically said when he came down, he basically said, okay, I'm in charge now, right? They're like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? And they basically said, now you guys are in charge. They're like, you follow yeah. me. And for whatever reason, how he did or whatsoever. That's why there's some told demons that are higher leveled, you would yeah. say, and older than than man's been on earth. Yeah, as they well, say. like anything, you have, you know, like even with heaven, you have God. Then you have like the archangels and stuff like that. And there's different lines for the archangels, and you have different. Well, if you're in the Catholic belief, the different. But then lies the question: Who created those other things? I don't know. Yeah, but but that's just a theory because of that. Other than the fact is. The other, because some people say that pagan belief talked about Baal and other, other, other demons that were before. Um, man was created. This is, this is Christian belief, mind you. This is Christian history as we know it. Man was created. God told the angels, I need you to love them more than me. And of course, Lucifer was like, what the fuck are you talking about? These flawless, these, fl- uh, these creatures have, they have no, they're full of sin. They're like that and stuff like that. They're, they don't understand and stuff like, how can you, like, and that's when, you know, the whole rebellion started and he was kicked out with the rest of, uh, his conspirators, in a sense. Um, but those conspirators could be, you know, angels that were sent down to Earth and became, they became morbid, they became destructive, they became demons. Mm-hmm. Right? And then, of course, Lucifer, Satan, he created them in a sense like that. There's a lot of holes um, that are well, theorized, but that's a generalization of what say happened, is what we're told in mm-hmm. a story. Is there more to it? Of course there is. Yeah, and yeah. no one really knows. Yeah. And the thing is, too, like, I know... Okay, so I don't know the demonology. Like, yeah, I'm, back, I'm back, learning. Back of my hand, I don't know <laughs> it. But I remember I was watching this exorcism, which I don't normally do, but I was really curious, and I watched this exorcism video. And in the exorcism video, they're going, who sent you, who sent you, who sent you, over and over again, right? And the girl was laughing, right? Just laughing. And obviously with the abilities, you know, a lot of these things, the best way, especially because I don't have like a lot of control over my abilities right now, is a thought will come to my head and I'm kind of like, why did I think that? And nine times out of 10, it's normally something else. It's not like my own thought process. It's something else. That's why I started writing down Anytime I had that, I would write it down. And so, like, for instance, that one day where I was, like, I kept mistaking Junior's name for Jordan. And I said, there's somebody, you know, coming through with Jordan. And so I remember I was watching the video and they kept going, who sent you? Who sent you? Who sent you? Right. And the girl was laughing. And granted, I don't know demonic names. And out popped this i'm not gonna say it this demonic name so i was like i don't even know who this is is this actually a demonic name right because it popped up when she was going nuts in my head so i looked it up and it was like one of the i think i want to say i don't know this for sure don't but i think there's like 12 like head demons but there's opposed to 10 kings of hell Mm -hmm. right um one of them was actually portrayed in uh, the movie Hereditary. Mm-hmm. Um, his whole, his, his, how he's worship is uh, what people would be heading. Mm. Right. That's his whole thing. I forgot his damn name, but um, he was actually worshiped in ancient Egypt. 
Hmm. Right. Uh, but yeah, the, what, the Ten Kings of Hell. And uh, I don't know if that was 12, but uh, that may be 12. There's hierarchies. This is how it was explained to me in I was reading uh, What's His Face's book. Um, Carl. Um, I forgot his last name. Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was reading his book, and he was talking about how it seems that they've discovered in demonology that there's hierarchies. Um, there's like generals, there's like lieutenants, yeah. and there's like foot soldiers and stuff like that when it comes to demons and stuff like that. And of course, the highest of them all being Satan himself. Um, and then he has, of course, the levels of, of demons who basically are in charge. And being possessed by one of those hierarchies is almost uh, a job for like a well experienced priest. Yeah. Oppression, possession, and stuff like that. That's probably another topic for another episode later oh, on. Oh, yeah, for sure. But um, as, so far as what we told from hell, there's not a lot of description. Right? Uh, and when it comes to descriptions that were being told, it came from Dante's Inferno. Uh, but there's actually another uh, theory of mine, which I will get to after a word from our sponsors. And to help out with uh, a sponsor uh, today, uh, I'm going to get Cletus. Oh, my gosh. I know you don't like Cletus. No, I don't like him. But he likes you. Ew, stop. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Cletus, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, dear. Uh, I'm here to talk about the uh, H2O uh, water capsule, uh, 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 water bottle thing that uh, Isaac got for a, uh, uh, we call it a uh, Christmas party. Um, he, he enjoyed it so much that when, uh, when Megan took a picture, we, we, uh, got sponsorship from there. But anyway, uh, it's a water bottle you can use for, uh, work and, uh, to the, we call, uh, the gym. Uh, it, it can hold like close to a gallon of water, which is pretty goddamn good when you're in the hot sun and shit. Um, it, it comes in different colors and stuff. Uh, it comes, of course, I got black because he's all about the metal shit. Uh, but you can get it in different colors that you want. Um, and if you use the codes, uh, Shadow Light, Shadows eight at the uh at the at your checkout on Amazon or it's uh it's it's uh, we call it its website you can get a ten percent off and, and stuff at that it's a H two O capsule um uh, it can hold your keys it can hold your wallet it can hold anything like that I wish it could hold a bear I'll tell you that much um but I buy probably to fill it up with bear just me myself anyway um but yeah use the code Shadows eight at your checkout and you get ten percent off all right thank you Cletus um. Right, go then. go away. All right. Yes, please. <laughs> what you didn't like when I talked to you? No, I don't. I don't God like when you talk to me. Here, here. <laughs> All right. Um, my third theory. Um, when it comes to hell, it's kind of a play on the second one, mm-hmm. but it's not an actual place, and it doesn't actually exist in a sense of. Now, this is my own personal theory. All right. And it doesn't exist in a place of uh, where souls go. Mm-hmm. It's almost exclusively only for demons. Yeah. And Satan himself, too. It's almost like a, a base. You know what? That would make more sense. And it's not a sense of a base, but it's it's a dimension where they are and where they come from and where they're born from. Mm-hmm. Because my theory is. <laughs> Sorry, I hit oh. my mouth. <laughs> okay, that's gross. But okay. Um, this is my own personal belief. You guys can play it if you want to or not. But I believe everyone who's ever died is still here. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, you're taking my dad's theory. Well, he's the one who told it to me and I kind of played onto it too. Right? Yeah, my but dad thinks this. It made a lot of sense to me and yeah, like that. But everyone who's ever died is still here. Those, yeah. mm-hmm. all right. And it, it says, well, what are you talking about? We people go to heaven and stuff like that. I, 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 I guarantee they will. But you got to remember, death and when you're dead is on the fourth place. If you believe what I believe, what if most people have talked about how it's your ghosts and your spirits on another dimension, which if it's on the fourth dimension, that's mm-hmm. time. And if time is not existence to someone who is dead, time is not real. So them being dead is it could seem like seconds to them, it could seem like hours, it could seem like years or decades to us. But again, this is my own theory, my personal thing. Everyone's ever died is still here. Hence why I believe. Also, with the evolution of go- uh, of equipment and technology, but ghost hunting has become more popular thing. Because mm-hmm. I think it's still it's getting crowded. Yeah, and not everyone who's ever died can easily come talk to everybody. So they're on that dimension, on that plane, or as the Catholics thought, purgatory, mm. which is here. 
Mm. Now, that dimension, that plane can be where it is. Now, this is just my theory. You know, do it with your way. But um, I think that plane where they are is where everyone who's ever died is. And that's why they can easily communicate with us. Where there's ever enough energy and stuff like that. Another dimension. Whatever that way that dimension is. Mm. But that dimension where hell is. Right? Where those demons can come. It's not connected to that dimension. It's another place altogether. I have thought through this and played around with different scenarios and different things. And the more I learn, the more I add to it. But that's the best what I can come up with right now. Yeah. Now, that theory might change over time when I learn more stuff. Of course it will. But that's what I, I, I think. That's not necessarily what I believe, but that's what I theorize. Because mm-hmm. um, I've never heard of demons that they'll punish people and they'll make them do their things. But evil spirits will. Evil spirits will bully around human spirits in certain places. Yeah. Kids, women, stuff like that, especially male horrible spirits. There's even female horrible spirits have actually oh, yeah. punished him and people around and pushed him around. Because I remember, I forgot where it was in Ghost Adventures, uh, they were talking about, oh yeah, speaking of Portals Hell, um, Bobby Mackey's Music Hall Ooh. in Wilder, Kentucky. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? There, yeah. But what are you thinking about? No, 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 no. I remember I came across, I don't know, I don't know why, I can't remember why I came across, but the preacher, or the, no, 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 not the preacher, obviously, the priest that goes there and does, like, the exorcisms and Mm -hmm. stuff, he popped up on my feed the other day. How? I don't know, and he was like, what was he talking about? I can't remember, but... Yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy to have him on an episode? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I, you would do that one yeah. because Um No, Bobby Mackey Music Hall. And if anyone's ever a fan of Ghost Adventures, um they've probably seen an episode or seen someone else uh investigate that place. But that place is infested with demons. Um they call it the portal of hell for it the fact it has so much infestation. And they almost say like roaches and stuff like that. But there's a lot. There's a lot. And a lot of people don't want to go there because of that. Uh, what's his face? Zach and Nick, um, or actually all three members of Ghost Adventures, the original ones, uh, would never set foot in there ever again because of all the stuff they brought home. But Jeez. if you've never watched it and you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Bobby Mackey's Music Hall. Bobby Mackey was a country star. He had a few, I think he had like one major hit song, but he's like from the early 70s and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He bought a uh, what used to be a slaughterhouse. Uh, we used to be a distillery building and turned it into a country western music hall in Wilder, Kentucky. Um, supposedly before it was, uh, it was, it had a stage and had stuff like that because it was a music hall for a certain music before Bobby Mackey bought it and had a dancer there. The legend goes that she was dancing in Johanna, who was in love with this, uh, musician, guitarist. Mm-hmm. But her father didn't approve, so he killed her lover and she, then again, committed suicide in the fact that that happened. Mm. So her spirit still haunts that place. But uh, it was in the, um, that was a long time ago. But apparently what made it haunted with demons is that there were two men. Uh, one of the guys named, I remember his name was Jackson, last name. He had a a, uh, a wife, Pearl, mm-hmm. who was pregnant. Um, and he cut off her head and threw it down the well that they drained blood into. For all the, the, the cattle that they, they slaughter and stuff like that as a sacrifice to Satan. What? Doing so, opening the portal to hell. Now, those two men were captured and hanged for their crime. Mm-hmm. And they still actually haunt the place as well. But they think when doing that, that those he opened up a portal to hell in the in the process of. Is someone behind me? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, I just got a weird thing. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's basically they thought how they opened up a portal. And Ghost Adventures, if you've seen the episodes of them going, I suggest watching them because some of the stuff they catch, especially the first time they go, mm-hmm. which is like one of the first early Ghost Adventures episodes, Zach gets scratched on his back and you see three claws down the, uh, on his, his his back. Jeez. Um, the second time they go, I think Nick or Zach gets mildly possessed. Well, and they hear growling and they hear things being moved and stuff when the priest is down there trying to do uh, exorcism or trying to bless the place and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's pretty intense. But that place alone 
for, for and I say it remember I brought up the original point how some ghosts get bullied. They believe Johanna is bullied by the demons that are there. Because her spirit is trapped there and the demons of course there all the time and she probably gets bullied around by them. Jeez. But that's also that place where uh the um I guess he was the grounds not groundskeeper. <laughs> but he was like the maintenance guy. Yeah. He was possessed. He got possessed. And there's actually footage of his exorcism. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is my body now. This body is mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't watch. I remember you were watching that and I couldn't. And this was before I was even into like my ability. I mean, I've always had my abilities, but like, like really embracing them. So uh, I remember I had to walk out of the room. I don't, I normally don't do exorcism videos, but like I said, that one video, I was like, I'm really interested to see what happens. And so I watched it. I'm not interested to see what happens. I obviously know what happens. But, like, something sparked my interest to watch it, which I shouldn't concede to those, you know, whatever. Um, no, but I remember watching it, and they were, like, dealing with the exorcism, and they were asking her. Like, she was laughing. And I think, I think I've been actually oppressed a couple times before in my life. Like, not fully oppressed, but, like, the start. Like, if I were to give in, if I were to give in, you know, in a sense, mm. that it would be. Um, I think definitely. I got to post the pictures of Spring Branch, that house we lived in, because it was a couple times over there where, um, like, my mom said, like, my face just looked really, really angry. Well, that was and, that was the the the, uh, the house that I had the encounter with the demon. Yeah, yeah, and I have, I have pictures of the house that I actually have wanted to post a couple times to see what like if anybody who's anybody can just get a feel for the that right um, house, and so you guys can see it too because it's in it's interesting to have like a visual representation. Um, but at the same time, I always get like reluctant because I don't I don't want to put. Because if there is evil stuff out there on that, you know, I don't want to put it out, kind of. Mm. But then I was like, if that was the case, and like when people post pictures of the Conjuring house or Amityville Horror house or any kind of house, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it would. So, um, but yeah, so because I know a lot of mediums follow, you know, the podcast and everything, and I'm kind of curious just to see. I know. Um, I have a medium friend named Tyler and he from broken spirit paranormal. And he said like, Whoa, there are some, especially the woods that land. And so, um, yeah, that's also the house that my sisters saw the doppel doppelganger of me. Like they would see me walking around and then I'd pop up behind them. And I'd be like, yeah, that wasn't me. And then that's also the house that I saw the closet rattle from the inside. Like someone was trying to get out of the closet. Yeah. And then that's also the house where the closet door would open up. And that's also the house where we had basically a room that was just like a storage room. And in that room, like we keep like Halloween decorations or whatever, an extra computer chair and stuff was in there. And literally... You could hear scratches in the middle of the night. Sometimes that was mice, though. Yeah. I mean, we live <laughs> in the country, country. So, I mean. And they were um, all gone. We got a couple of cats. Yeah. No, but there is. And that's also the house where um, uh, Isaac saw that. Like, you've heard him tell the story a couple of times where it was like twitching in my sleep. And then he looked up and there was like a dark thing with red eyes. Black mass with red eyes. In the yeah. Sun. Yeah. Yeah. And I I remember we had this um swing my dad made out of like wooden plank. And I remember I would always go listen to music and swing, you know, just I always even before like I really tried embracing my abilities, I always had where I have to stay by myself, have alone time. And I remember I would swing on the swing listening to music like before work or stuff like that. I remember I would look into the woods and like have random thoughts. And I remember I thought I saw somebody. And I was like, and I remember I yelled at, Who are you? Because I was sick and tired of feeling like I was being watched. Who are you? Who are you? Right? 
And I remember I was swinging still. Like, I was swinging and I was like, who are you? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, because I was like 18, 19. And as soon as I swung up into the air, the swing broke. And I felt like hard, like to the point where I had bruises all over my back and like scrapes on my butt because like it was gravel that I hit and like skid on. And it was just like that house just had bad juju, but... I don't know if that was a real person or if I was seeing things. Dun, dun, dun. And then also that land too, we had like dogs and animals and things would just die. Cats would die. Like I remember one time we had a cat that showed up with its like head apart from its body. Like someone killed it. Well, yeah, the whole different Story yeah I, it's it's <laughs> i know sorry it, but it's crazy but it shows you like because i know i always say it like how much that like demons and stuff can have control over humans it still mind blows me and that's one of those concepts like that in the paranormal world that blows my mind like i don't know what i would do if i actually saw an exorcist like in front of me i mean exorcism exorcism yeah, yeah. like in front of me happening I'm not sure what I would do. Continuing. <laughs> yes. Sorry. No, but I think that kind of coincides with the gates of hell because, like, that's why I think, like, hell is kind of on our plane. Uh, yes and no. It's it, it can be accessed very easily, apparently. Yeah. But uh, one of the one of the final things I want to say talk about, but uh, what came up, not one of the other things I want to talk about, uh, the movie, As Above, So Below. Have you seen it? Mm-mm. Pretty good. But in a movie, it's because it takes well another portal to hell. And now it's never been said to be a portal to hell. But the fact that how it's so much shit has happened there. And how the, mm-hmm. what's described is uh, the Paris Catacombs. Oh, heck yeah. Now, right? And yeah. that's what took place in the movie, As Above, So Below. Those who've seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I know yeah. what it is. But okay. there's a specific scene that's taken out from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, they were made to crawl on their bellies as they entered the gates of hell, and above would be inscribed "Ben and all hope ye who enter here." Now there was a scene where they had to crawl on their stomachs in order to get through this hole that led to a place, and above that hole was that. Wow! Scratch. It was in Latin though, and one okay. of the people there could apparently read Latin, but yeah. So it depicted how they got there and stuff like that. Now. The experiences they experienced down the catacombs and stuff like that, or hell, essentially, was exactly how described by different places. Is that you experience your worst thing possible, right? Mm-hmm. Lead, she experienced her father hanging himself um, again and again. She got a phone call from him before he did. Um, other characters experienced different things and stuff like that. But the catacombs themselves, people who get lost down there, they were found again. Because they're so in depth, and they're so there's there's uh, times they've collapsed. That's and stuff actually like that. that's actually like one of my places. Like I know I've asked this question on Instagram a couple times about like what's a place you would want to go to that like if you took away like all the restrictions like money and time and all that stuff, where would you go? And I said the Paris catacombs, but i would have to take away my fear too because like i don't like tight spaces you don't like tight spaces and the idea of being underground freaks me out a bit that's why i don't really care for caverns or caves i mean i'll be fine with caves as long as it's open but like no we crawl into a tiny space all it takes is one slip and like you slip down a weird hole and then you can't get out like i think one of my most horrible like things would be like the stories that we had told in the last couple episodes where like the guy gets stuck and he can't he dies down there and he gets stuck can't get him out oh yeah that freaks me out Mm. but yeah um it's also told in the bible that they'll be made to crawl in their bellies and stuff like that so um to think the gates of hell is a giant place with metal gates and stuff like that you enter and stuff like that that's probably far-fetched that's probably like we call it hollywood eyes you would say Mm. But in a recent, you probably have to crawl through something small uh, to get to it. Now, funny enough, there's a story I I uh, heard mm-hmm. talking about. Um, <laughs> now, I don't know if it's an actual story, someone's uh, experience or whatever, but it's a scary story altogether. 
there was a story about a a, a guy who his um when he was a kid his grandfather uh they they lived in in, in his his house uh when he what can okay, go back when he was a kid he lived in the house that his parents lived in so basically his grandfather's house yeah. so basically his grandfather his parents and him were all in the same house together and this mm-hmm. is the house that his father grew up in and for the longest time it was a red door upstairs that was always locked and no one uh, uh, no one was allowed to go into mm-hmm. right his father said I, I don't know what um, i don't know what's in there i've never been allowed um only your grandfather has right mm-hmm. his father and his grandfather would go in there once uh, a week every day on the same time go in and then every time that his grandfather would come back he'd be sweaty he'd be and when his grandfather would come out of the door, he'd be distraught. He'd be um, like sweaty. He'd be like, like he just like I don't know, like I'd done building something. Like he'd be all like scared and shit. Like oh my so God. never stood why. Um, so his curiosity got the best of him. He like he couldn't stand not knowing what was in there, right? Mm-hmm. So one day he snuck in and um, stole the key to his grandfather that red door. He unlocked it. He went in. And what we see, we saw it look like a uh, a closet, but the closet kept going back, and to a point where we started the hallway, like wood and stuff like that. And like they kept walking. He he said the the walk that it took, like it took like a couple of minutes. Like there's no way that this is part of the house. Mm-hmm. And he kept walking, and then it was dark, mind you, like pitch black, which he had a flashlight for. And then he kept walking, and the fact that the wood on the easy floors that turned into dirt. Yeah. And he was walking on dirt, like what? What is what is up here? And then he started hearing voices and people talking, and then, and then no. he started hearing like loud screaming, and then there's people like a loud voice talking as he got closer, and then he saw like uh, a red, like tinted light coming from like an, at the end of this long tunnel. Don't go by the light, man. And he started getting closer and closer to a point where it opened up into like a uh, a cliffside, and what he saw was. A fiery lake of la- basically lava, but all these creatures torturing people, f- like winged like creatures from hell and stuff like that. People screaming in pain. So what do you do at this point? Right, he saw this and he said that he could feel the heat on his face, like he was basically like it was almost like over a hundred degrees, but like his hair was matted. He was like sweating because the heat level like that. And one of these uh, demons, like they sound like it was talking loud over everyone, looked and saw him. And it said something, and like all these demons, the so creatures actually were flying towards him. So he turned around and hauled ass, uh, basically running down the thing, and hear these things coming down the hall, the, this this hallway after him, this tunnel. And finally gets to the red door, slams it closed, stuff like that. And you hear it banging on the other side, and he locks it. His grandfather apparently was there, waiting for him to get back through the door, and he told him, you know, don't don't go in there. Don't, I told you not to go in there. I told you not to go in there for a reason. So his grandfather went in there, right? And after, say, 20 minutes or so, he came back out. And then and, and he said, I told you not to go in there. And now what you know, you were not supposed to know not till now. And for some reason, he uh, never talked about it again. But um, when he was older and his grandfather passed away, his father was had to take over the responsibility. Of what? Of whatever this door is and whatever has to be done to keep these demons from entering through that door. Ew. Yeah. That's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, sorry to scare you guys to <laughs> shit like that. You're probably never going to fucking so- <laughs> open a red door ever again. Um, but that concludes today's episode in Portals of Hell and so yeah. on. Now you got everyone up that's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, so what's, uh, what's uh, next week's episode? So next week's episode, and it's kind of funny that all those documents came out. Because oh, yeah. Because we're so doing yeah. declassified documents. And because there's so much there, uh, basically how we're doing the research is Isaac's going to talk about the alien portion side of things, especially the big document dump that happened recently and then i'm talking more of the paranormal side of things that came out in declassified documents and you know, not just what's been declassified by um recently or even by the cia with their um you know 
their studies on, on how we call it, uh, mental powers and, and manifestation mm-hmm. and psychic stuff like that. We'll also talk about that, but also, um, things have been declassified in the past. Yeah. That you might have not heard of or probably totally forgot and about. I don't know. I have to do more research, but I could have swore, and I swear it, I have a hard time finding it right now, but I could have swore. Like how the documents, the aliens came out, yeah. something came out from the Vatican about exorcisms. Mm. And it was like they, they have a secret vault kind of still, but they released some of their documents. So if I can find that, I will bring that to this episode, next episode. And I actually read a few, it's just 7,000 goddamn pages of this, this thing that's been released so far, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, something that's, I found it interesting in the first couple of pages or so. The first, I forget where it was. Most of it's just bullshit. Like this, talking about that, 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 this. But one of them was um, recorded black box that a stewardess said that she saw something in the center of the universe, as it described. Weird. I think she's talking about the outside of the, the ones. But it said it looked like a black cube with stars in it. Hmm. That was like almost like. Oh, really? Reflective. Yeah, I didn't really. But where it, uh, how it was in the in the sky, it basically looked like it had its own stars coming out of its source. Weird. Yeah, no, yeah. I haven't actually, like, I started kind of skimming through. It's kind of hard to read those documents, like, when you're. Yeah, because I talked about a mafia boss being arrested and stuff like that, or being assassinated. I'm like, when did that have to do with aliens? Yeah. So you got to kind of, plus they have a lot of blacking out that they do. A lot of redacted stuff. Yeah, so. Like, 20 pages of redacted stuff. I'm like, oh, what's the point then? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. But yeah, there was that one snippet of that whole entire thing. Um, I'll also talk about the other uh, thing released by the CIA when it talks about mental abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, next week's stuff. Yeah. Uh, do we have like announcements or something? Oh, okay. So, we are going to start something called Saturday Night Lives. We did not agree on this. Yes. Yeah, I told you. Weekly Lives on Saturday night. Yeah, but calling it that. Well, I, that's the best way to say it. <laughs> Saturday night Instagram lives. Oh, my God. You might as so, well take SNL from them. No. <laughs> um, so, uh, and the reason why I did that is because you get off early. I am. work. So, it makes sense. So, um, there was actually a lot of people that kind of reached out to us that wanted to do a collab like Instagram live. And that's what that is. If like for one Saturday, we don't have anybody, we'll just do with some with our, just ourselves. And then, um, sometimes it'll be just Isaac. Sometimes it'll be just me. Sometimes it'll be both of us, you know, with someone else. Um, kind of like the whole collab that we did with, um, junior from sinister, sinister files. Um, so there's actually a link in our link tree, which is linked in our bio on Instagram, where you can actually, if you want to book us for our, your show, or if you want to be a part of the Saturday Night Live. Put an S on it. Then live. Saturday safe Night from, Lives. Say from Oh, uh, yeah. Technically that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Saturday Night Lives. Instagram oh. Lives. We can even throw that in there. Um, you can actually kind of book it, and it's just an easier way for us to see, like, who wants to do it instead of having it through our DMs. Um, cause, you know, it might get lost, and plus it automatically imports that into our calendar. So it works. So, yeah, um, if you want to go live with us on Saturday. And you don't have to have a podcast. You can be honestly just a fan, and we'll go live with you. We'll Ask talk us about questions or whatever you want to know about. Like, oh, maybe you're talking about this, and you didn't really go in depth with it. Yeah, cause Megan likes to interrupt me. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm the type of person, if I don't say what I, is in my head at that moment, because I'm thinking so much and I'm getting so much, that, like, I forget. Yeah. So, I have a tendency of interrupting, but it's not because I'm intentionally trying to interrupt you. It's because if I don't say it, I forget it. I, I should probably be one of those people that have a notepad with her at all times. And we got a lot of um podcasts um, that I'm becoming... Um, going on as guest ads mm-hmm. um and then we're also gonna have a lot of uh well our, what we're planning to do in in the in, in month of february and the future months from then on mm-hmm. is that uh we're getting so much uh we call it traction and requests for interviews for possible bonus episodes that we actually are going to start doing uh twice a month yeah instead of one so isaac's yeah. going to get one at the beginning of the month mine is at the end and february um because we're already starting to plan that out. Uh, February Isaacs is going to be 
Project Entity. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> you forgot the name? No, oh I forgot God. who I was doing it with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Project Entity. And I'm yeah. doing a special one. Um, That's kind of cool. So, not kind of. It is cool. Yeah. So. But, um, um yeah, the, uh, February's bonus episode. Because we're going to do two. So, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess we'll decide, you know, who's going to be first and who's going to be second. But, um. Yeah, so we one bonus episode with me and one bonus episode with Megan. Yeah. Uh, just because one of us has got to watch our turd. So. Oh, my God, not our turd. Our <laughs> son, you fart. Um, um, but, yeah, so that's going to be the future of what we're going to start doing. Um, and if you know somebody who wants to be interviewed, and we're probably going to find our own people who want to be interviewed as well. That We actually have a long list of people that we want to bring back, on the, uh, bring back onto the show that we've interviewed in the mm-hmm. past. I know I want to try to get Believe in the Bazaar back again. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know I want to trick out and get Carl Johnson back again, mm-hmm. along with um, James Nino. And James Nino. Um, and with a few other people to see who else we can get in contact with. And then finally, hopefully, try to get my white whale of somebody from Ghost Adventures. Jeez, that's a big one. Yeah. I kind of like, now that I say it, I want to see if, I don't know if this person would do it, but I kind of want to reach out to the priest that was at Bobby Mackey's. Uh, even though that scares the crap out of me, you're gonna have to do that one. Yeah. I don't want to do that. But um, yeah, I have some like uh people, and I'm trying to like Isaac is mainly kind of going after like the um. And if you haven't checked out January's bonus episode with Yami, I highly recommend. It was a pretty good episode. But the next, laughs. the next uh live we do, we're gonna announce uh the shows that I'm being guests on. Yeah. That you guys can go check out and uh, find out about. Yeah, because that's another thing we're working on is we're not just sticking, like, guesting on paranormal uh, podcasts. We're trying to go into other interests, like Isaac will be on a wrestling one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to find one that I like that's of my interest. Um, so that would be willing to take me on. So because, like, I love Halloween so much, like, I celebrate it, like, all year round, just because I'm, I'm obsessed with Halloween. Well, that's going to be decor of our houses. Yeah. Halloween-esque. Yeah. No, but, like, if I can get on one of those, like, podcasts that all they talk about is Halloween stuff, I'd be fine. Or, like, a horror movie podcast. Or, like, even a movie podcast would be cool with. Um, but, yeah. So, a lot of cool stuff. And we're still working on merch. Actually, probably by the end of January, we're going to have that. Uh, basically, we took all of our kind of like unique quotes or stuff that we say all the time and made them into sticker form. So it'll be a sticker bundle of five stickers and a keychain for Hidden in the Shadows. And I don't know, like pricing yet or whatever, but. A hundred dollars. Oh, my God. No. Yeah. We're not that. Those <laughs> types of people. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, that should be coming out and as well as like significant, like more in depth, like merch, like t-shirts and stuff like that. And then I'm still working on, so hopefully January will be the month that we release our actual website, which will have like blog postings of the paranormal subjects. Um, it'll have our transcription of our episodes, uh, different things like that, ways that you can put your, like, stories on there and, uh, forum about, like, the paranormal. You can discuss things with other people in the community. And so, yeah, so hopefully that is going to be out soon. All right. Yeah. Well, it's time to go. Yeah. All right. So we'll catch your weirdos in the next one. Yes. Yeah.